Oh, goodness. Well, happy, happy Easter. Oh, I'm looking around for some bunnies, but I don't see any out there. I guess we had the bunny last week. And I, you know, I love all of the wonderful symbols, all of the traditions of Easter. I look around our sanctuary and we have these beautiful white lilies that symbolize purity and new life. And I think about all of the other traditions and symbols that truly are about Easter, but actually are about new life and spring emerging. Now, did you know that Easter actually originated with the pagan tradition that circulates around the spring equinox? And it's really, the name Easter itself comes from the goddess named Estar. So you see the connection. Comes from Estar. And she was all about, now really pay attention, fertility, hmm, and new life. Hence, Easter bunnies, fertility, Easter eggs, yeah, green grass in Easter baskets. So we see it's all about the arrival of new life after a long, long cold winter. And so we rise up in this resurrection of new life. And as we know in the Christian tradition, however, we use Easter as our time to rise up from a great transformation spiritually. Easter is such a joyful, joyful holiday. It's the time when we join with all others um, as our brothers and sisters and we celebrate Jesus' triumphant rise up over death. We celebrate the end of his ministry and the impact that his ministry has had on us. And we open, as Jesus did in this week, more clearly than any other week we see in his ministry. We open to the transformation that he went through, really embracing his humanity and choosing than to surrender into his divinity. This, indeed, is what we call the Easter experience. It's about really choosing transformation as a way of bringing forward the highest level of truth in Christ that we can from the core of our beings. Easter is no small thing. It's not for wussies, it's nothing. It's really heavy-duty spiritual work. But the result of Easter is that we do rise and we change as never before. And that's why this beautiful song that Val just sang, Rise Up, has so much meaning if you've ever had an Easter experience. You know, in Unity, we talk a lot about transformation. We talk about leaving behind our humanity, our, our consciousness, in the sense of where it holds us back in limiting thoughts, in negativity, in fear, and in judgment. And we talk about transforming that and moving from the small mind into the Christ that we are. So when I think about that, I like to look to nature because I see transformation right in front of me. And so think about that for yourself. For example, when you see nature, that transformation is indeed an evolutionary process, we just look to the caterpillar, the humble little caterpillar. And we watch a metamorphosis unfold as the caterpillar moves through its ways and it eventually evolves into a beautiful butterfly. Or we can take a tiny little seed, just a little seed, and if we think about that seed, as we place it in the ground, as it takes in sunlight, water, it emerges into a flower, into a tree, into something beyond what it had as its potential in the form of a seed. Well, the same is true of us. We have a transformation 
that goes on with each of us. Now, when you look around, you see people in their human form, right? And you recognize each other and you say, Oh, I know Betsy. That's Betsy. I recognize her form. Or I look over there and I say, There's Debbie or there's Kathy. I recognize the outer form. And sometimes we recognize a person's personality and their habits and their ways of being, and we say that's who they are. But do we know and do we remember that who they really are is something far greater? Whether we like or dislike their personality and their presence, there is something deeper that lives in each and every one of us, and it is the living Spirit of God. At Easter, at Easter, we are called to transform from our human selves and the human consciousness that holds us back, and we are called to transform into the Christ nature that yearns to express through us. Now, I say that as human and spiritual beings, we have a choice. And this choice is that we are going to get there anyway because, you see, our Christ nature is always going to bring us back to God. But it just depends on our free will, free will and our choice as to how soon or how fast we get there. So we can either take what I call the scenic route, you know, when you take the scenic route to God. So that means you look around and you kind of stay in your stuff. And then every now and then you come from your divinity and you do something remarkable or you have a thought that's transforming and you're kind of proud of yourself. And then you go back and you're back in your human stuff. Now, I know that this, of course, doesn't relate to any of us because we have chosen to come to church, for goodness sakes. So we, of course, are evolved beings. But we do know a few people that kind of live going that scenic route, do we not? Yeah, some of us know more than others. But anyway, so... <laughs> but we can either take the scenic route or we can take the direct route. And when we take that direct route, what happens is we choose. We consciously choose from the Christ of our being to live and move and have our very being in God. And that indeed is a transformation. Now in being totally honest, there are times when I like to stay on that scenic route. You know, sometimes I do kind of like to stay in my stuff. You know, I like to get all excited and worked up about stuff, and I'm so right, and oh, no, 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 no. I like to kind of stay in it, and, or maybe I'm making that up, I don't know. But I think that there are times when I like to get in that. And then I hear that inner voice inside that's calling me up to another way. And I sort of say, later, and I just stay in it, and I might talk about something, or I ruminate. And yet I know Spirit is calling me up to a greater way. And every time, every time that I choose to allow Spirit to have its way, when I choose to go that direct route, when I release my affinity to the human consciousness that holds me back, then I am having a resurrection experience. This is what Easter is truly about. It's what Jesus went through, especially in that last week, and it's what we go through in our lives. Think about this. In this world, there are times when we have experiences that are incredibly overwhelming. And it doesn't have anything to do with how good we are. It has nothing to do with how hard we try. But it has to do with our soul journey. 
And sometimes we have experiences that just knock us to our knees. We never deserved them. We didn't even choose them. But they are in our experience. And there are other times when we have experiences inwardly where we hold on and we cling to that which is not of God. And we don't even know that we're choosing them, but they become those ingrained patterns. And they are so familiar in our thinking and in our understanding that we do this silly thing. We say, that's the way I am. And we actually believe we have no other choice. But then the Spirit of God calls us up to transform, to transform radically and to choose the path of God as the truth from which we will live. And when we make that choice, that resurrection happens and there is joy that comes from our heart. You know, one of the greatest experiences that we look to is that we want to go back to this last week of Jesus' life. And as we do, I want to lead you through his transformation as an inspiration for us to transform as well. And so let's go back, and you'll remember that last week was Palm Sunday. It was the Sunday when the Jewish people gathered in the city of Jerusalem for the great celebration of their freedom, their emancipation from slavery, from Egypt. And so thousands and thousands of people gathered for this week of celebration. Jesus had entered the city through the back door, so to speak, and he was there. And at this time in this week, he was now coming to his closure with the disciples. I believe he knew what was before him. And there are words in Scripture that kind of lead us in this direction to believe that that was indeed the case. And so Jesus is communing with the disciples during this last week. And I try to imagine how he might have felt knowing he journeyed together with these 12 for three years. They'd been through thick and thin and he was preparing them and there was so much love in his heart. He washed their feet as a humble gesture to say, you are great. The Christ within you is calling you forward in a new way to carry on the work that I began. And so we have an image of this time, and we know that then they communed at what we call the Last Supper, for this was the last time that they ate together. And I want to share with you a beautiful poetic reading from the way that Jesus spoke to the disciples then. He said to them, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate that will be with you forever. The advocate is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees or knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be with you. Know this, I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. Now in a little while, the world will no longer see me but you will see me because I live and also you live. As Jesus prepared the disciples to go forward from the Christ of their being, he was calling them up. 
He was saying, you are no longer your personality self. You are no longer small. You are no longer who you think you are. There is something within you that is greater and you are needed to bring forward that greatness by doing three things. By loving God with all your being. For when you love God, it affords you the ability to love others with all your being as well. When you love God with all that you are, you are transformed and you love others and you see them as the children of God, not as this religion, that faith, not as somebody that I like or somebody I don't like, but you see them as God sees them and love pours from your heart. And as that happens, you will be guided by the whole spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will lead you forward. So do not count on me to tell you what to do in my body and in my form. But listen to the whole spirit of truth within you and go forward and be transformed as you transform the world. That is the message he gave to the disciples. And as he gave them that message... He was preparing for his own death. He knew that in the day ahead, he would be convicted, he would be crucified, he would be hung on a tree, a cross to die. I think about the violence of Jesus' death, and I think about what it would require to go forward in that way. And what we know is that when he was preparing and when he was on the cross, he spoke words seven times. And during that time, we see that he opened to the power of forgiveness and he moved from his human self. He released his attachments in the earthly way. He opened to redemption and reconciliation. He called out for mercy from his human self. And he was filled by the Spirit of God within him. And by being filled, by choosing that direct route in that moment of his greatest need, his greatest, most poignant need, he surrendered into God. And truly, he was transformed in every way. And those little remnants within his being that were human and that struggled, that pushed and pulled with, why does this have to happen? Now fell away as he surrendered into the presence and the power of God. And so I think about Jesus on that cross. I remember the words that Charles Fillmore spoke about that, and he said that the cross, the cross symbolizes a crossing out of consciousness from our error thinking. He said we have fixed states, ingrained states of error thinking, and when we cross them out, they no longer hold us, and in fact, by crossing those fixed states out, we allow the Christ mind within us to be expressed in its fullness. Now those ingrained patterns are not the little quirks and preferences we have, but they're those deep false ideas and beliefs and practices we have that we know are not of God. You know, there's those spaces where we allow ourselves, we are lenient with ourselves to stay separate from God. 
their beliefs about insecurity and inadequacy and judgment and superiority and hatred and unforgiveness. Fixed states within our being. But when we cross them out, we can allow Christ to fully come forward in us and we are no longer who we were. That is Easter. That is resurrection. And so we can choose. And I say today, let us make that choice. For today we look at the world and we have message after message after message about terrorism. And if we dig a little further, we see message after message after message about hatred, about prejudice, about fear. All ingrained states of human consciousness. But when we choose that direct route in the face of such ugliness, in the face of such enormity, and when we choose to allow the Christ to emerge as peace, as faith, as love, then we are transforming not only our own consciousness, but the consciousness of the world. Every one of us is called to do our part. The world needs our consciousness to make a radical shift. We're not waiting for some God in the sky to come down and fix this or come down and do this. We are the way God gets around, and it is our consciousness that allows such foolishness to go on. But it is our consciousness that will make the difference. And so I invite you this Easter to really open up to the possibility and the power of your own resurrection and how your choice makes a difference in the world. And so going back to the story in Jesus' life, we see that he was hung on the cross. He had made the decision to live in God. But we discover in the Gospels that when his loved ones went to find him in the tomb, Easter morning he was not there. And I love, I love the story of Mary Magdalene that's written in the Gospel of John. It's a beautiful, beautiful story about how she went to find him. And you might remember that when she goes there, there are two angels that speak to her. And then Jesus speaks to her from behind her. She doesn't recognize his voice. She thinks that he is a gardener who is behind her and she's talking with him. And at first when I read that, I always wondered, well, how on earth would she not recognize his voice? You know, I've had loved ones that have passed, and sometimes I hear their voices, and their voices sound just like them as I knew them. So I wonder, why did Jesus not sound like Jesus to her? And then I realized Jesus went through a radical transformation. He no longer was who he was when she last spoke to him, when she last saw him. So symbolically, she would not recognize him. He is transformed. He no longer is his personal self on any level. But he is the risen Christ, the risen divine in expression. It is an amazing, amazing story. And I just want to share this scripture with you. Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she began to look over into the tomb, and she saw that there were two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying. 
one at the head and one at his feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said, Well, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know that it was Jesus. So Jesus spoke to her and he said, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? And supposing him to be the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, would you tell me where you have laid him? And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned to him. And she said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Do you see what has happened? Jesus has come forward in his Christ itself. And her idea of who he was was no longer the truth. But she recognized his spirit. She felt the power of who he was. And from this message, we understand that, yes, there are parts of us that will die. There are parts of us that must die if we are to rise up as the Christ. But if we choose that direct route, no matter how hard life gets at times, no matter how troubled or how stubborn we are at times, if we choose that direct route to the inner Christ, we will indeed rise up and resurrect as never before. Like Jesus, we will not be the same. And nothing, not even death in any way, has power over us. There are so many things in this world, and they affect us deeply. But there is no person there is no situation, there is no condition greater than the power of the living Christ that lives in each and every one of us. And this Easter, let us rise up in a radical transformation. Let us choose the Christ as never before. We have nothing to wait for. The world needs us to rise up just as we need ourselves to rise up. Are you ready? And are you willing? The choice is yours. Happy Easter and God bless. <laughs>